Hello, I'm Fabian uh, from Juice, and I'll talk to you about this crazy idea I had. Uh, it's called Super Scopes. I can't see my pointer. Oh, okay, it doesn't work on that screen. Uh, yeah, a, a crazy idea I had about Super Scopes, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty out there. I'm not sure if it really makes sense, but hey, I'll give it a go. So um, we all know variable scoping in C++. We all love it. Uh, let me just talk you through it again. Uh, so at the bottom level, we have like local variables that the lifetime is connected to the lifetime of your code block. Uh, it, the visibility is only inside the code block. At the next level, maybe you could say we have member variables. Uh, the lifetime is somehow connected to the object, so that means when the class gets instantiated, your member variables get instantiated, and when the class gets destructed, all your member variables get destructed. The visibility is all the methods uh, and, then the, and the constructor and the destructor. Then you have something in C14, uh, thread local. Then you have global variables, which is connected to the lifetime of the application. But can we somehow even go higher? Yeah? Can we, is there a scope level that's even higher than global scope? So that was sort of my idea. But let's track back for a moment. Like, how did I have this idea? Well, I have this uh, software bundle that I wrote a few years ago, and that installed three applications. And it was a demo, so I always annoyed the user with this nice little demo dialogue, and it would tell the user how many hours and minutes and seconds of audio processing time they had left before they had to pay uh, a really high license fee, of course. And uh, that all I needed to do is sort of store a variable called number of audio samples processed, and it was just an integer. Okay, so I have a nice little database file somewhere that has that integer in there. Uh, then the installer, of course, has to initialize it to zero, yeah. Okay, somehow all the applications have to talk to that because you know, they all have to increment that little counter. I have to check if it's done, okay, okay, well, that doesn't really work because we need a daemon, of course, because of all these applications. And then we need IPC calls, and oh my God, this is such a mess. I mean, if we, just, we just want to increment one single uh, variable. Like, how hard can it be? So I wrote this class a long time ago called Installation Local. It's a template class, and you can put in any variable inside there, and it's really like, uh, you can think of it as like a new higher level scope. So what this does is if you build an application with this installation local, it will actually modify your installer. So that means that when the installer installs your application, it instantiates that variable, does some crazy serialization stuff, uh, and all the applications, it hides away all that IPC, can talk to that variable, and when you deinstall, the variable goes out of scope. It actually calls the destructor on that variable. Um, so let's look at some code. So, <laughs> Uh, before, let's say, installation uh, local, you, maybe your application would look like this. This is like a typical uh, Qt application or a juice application where you would have uh, an application class. And you would typically then have the application instance as a global variable. You see that last line there at the bottom. Now, uh, for my little uh, software bundle there, I have two applications. You see on the left side, they're just two, two application classes. Uh, I actually had three, but yeah. And then, in the same file, you maybe have this software bundle class all of a sudden. And the software bundle class, look at the very, very last line, it's not a global variable, it's an installation local variable. That means when you install it, the software bundle class gets instantiated. When you uninstall it, it gets destructed. And every time the user double clicks on one of those applications, that little create application with name is called. And the nice thing is, if you look at the left side at the process sample, I'm sorry, I don't have a laser pointer, but at the process sample, how it increments the num samples process, that just points into the software bundle class. Yeah, so everybody can talk to that variable, can just increment it, use it like a normal, normal variable. Okay, so can we do other crazy stuff? Like, that was just one idea of super scope. I mean, I haven't, I haven't implemented this, but this is just like, let's, let's get really crazy. So how about a login local? Like, how about when the user logs in, some variables gets instantiated, everybody, all the applications can use it running under that user, and when the user logs out, it gets destructed. It might be useful. Maybe machine local. When S gets installed, uh, some things get instantiated and destructed. And then probably a really, really useful one, but also really, really hard to implement, but probably the most useful one might be a cloud local scope. This would get rid of all of this web backend talk. You would have a, a scope that comes into scope when your company gets founded, when you turn on that web app, and you never want to call the destructor because that means your company is bust. <laughs> uh, but all your applications of your company can talk to these variables. 
So that's, it's, uh, I'm not presenting an implementation here, I'm presenting an idea, maybe a new way of thinking. Uh, yeah, and if you have any questions or want more details of that implementation, uh, ask now or send me an email or talk to me later. Thank you.